Hello everyone, this is Robert and these are some 3D printer nozzles. In this video I'm going to be talking all about hardened nozzles and specifically this new Diamondback Diamond Nozzle. Ooh. Um, ultimately I use hardened nozzles for various reasons which we'll talk about and I'm going to see if this Diamond Nozzle is the new next best thing in nozzle technology. So let's um, get right into it. Okay, so first up, why hardened nozzles? Why don't you just use a standard brass nozzle? Well, there's a lot of different types of filaments out there, and not all of them will work perfectly with a brass nozzle because they can be abrasive. There's a lot of abrasive filaments out there. You might be looking at like a marble filament, uh, the wood fill filament, or specifically the carbon fiber or fiberglass filaments. That filament has some kind of abrasion elements inside of it and when it runs through the nozzle it will just sit there and open up the diameter basically just sands out the little nozzle tip opens that up and then the nozzle doesn't perform the same way so you need to go with some sort of hardened nozzle that won't wear down the same way now unfortunately a standard nozzle like this this is a um, a2 tool steel nozzle. It is hard, however, it doesn't have the same thermal properties that something like a brass nozzle has. So unfortunately, you'll have to adjust some temperatures and this one's all clogged and impacted. That's because it doesn't really work well with things like um, TPU, for example, which kind of ends up sticking to the interior and ends up giving you some partial extrusion, things like that. So. The downside to a lot of the hardened nozzles is they just don't conduct heat as well and also they will be stickier for other types of filament. Brass is still kind of the best overall material, but there are a couple um, nozzles like this that are out there that do a little bit better. Up until now, I've been using this Nozzle X from E3D and it has performed pretty good, although I did notice when I was printing some PETG recently for a project that it had the sticking issue and after a lot of dealing with the um, temp profiles and things like that, I couldn't get it really dialed in, so I decided to try this Diamondback nozzle. So if we open up this Diamondback nozzle and look at it a little bit closer. Comes in this nice little aluminum case, which I would rather they just drop the price five bucks and not include this, but whatever. You can see that it is basically a brass nozzle with this little diamond tip on the end of it. And it's just the tip there. Now the thing about diamond is actually a really good thermal conductor. So theoretically, this should conduct the heat the same way as the brass. It should not wear down because diamond is quite hard and we shouldn't have to adjust any of the profiles and the filament shouldn't be sticking to this like it does with some of the other hardened steel nozzles. So in theory, the promise of this is that it does the same performance as a brass nozzle, it just doesn't wear down. Now let's look at um, some of the issues that I was having with the PETG prints. So here is one of the connector pieces um, that I was printing for the um, printer box. I've got this um, printer enclosure I'm doing for my Prusa printers. And you can see there's just all sorts of um, globbing on the outside. There is a lot of stringing on the inside of here. This isn't awful. I'm not gonna act like this is the worst print and I was just having failed prints, but this was almost impossible to get rid of. I tried adjusting the flow. I tried adjusting the temperature and I was getting a lot of stringing and just um, zits and blobs all over the print. And when you watch the print actually happening, you can see that the tip is just dragging and oozing along the surface and the whole tip of the nozzle was just caked in goo and I'd have to clean it off after every print. It just really wasn't ideal because it was just sticking to the end of it. So. I'm going to install this guy and see if I can correct some of these issues. Okay, I feel like before I install this, I've got to say the obvious, yes, you can just swap your nozzle to one of these. This, this is a um, volcano style, it's just a little bit bigger, but you can get these things for like 50 cents or a buck a piece. I could just swap my nozzles Every time I'm doing a print, I could go over to the Nozzle X, use that, and if I'm doing um, TPU or some other filament that doesn't like the hardened nozzle, I could just swap that out. I'm lazy and I want one 
tip, one nozzle for everything. I don't want to have to swap things back and forth. I want to have one nozzle. The first time you forget it, you're going to ruin a print. I would rather spend the extra money. This is $100. This is not a cheap nozzle. I would rather spend the extra money to save myself a failed print or save myself the time. I've already printed these a couple times. These are very high infill. They take a long time. I've already wasted my time with this. I just want to get one nozzle that will work for everything. So let's swap this in and see if it works. So I got the nozzle all swapped out, but look at this thing. This is the old nozzle. I'm sorry I can't get any closer than this, but this thing is just absolutely caked. And this was just a couple um, Pet G prints. It just sticks everywhere to the end of it. So hopefully we'll fix some of that too. Um, but the new prints are printing and I'll come back and let you know the results. And drum roll. Here is the new part that was just printed on the Nozzle X. And as you can see, there's really no issues whatsoever. There's no stringing. I'm getting nice clean layers. Um, it's very shiny, so on the camera in this harsh light in the shop, you're seeing you know, kind of all the layers to it. But this looks pretty perfect in my mind. There's really no issues, no artifacts, anything like that. Now, interesting, let's compare it with one of the other parts. Now, this is the same filament and the same profile and same settings. This one is very matte, and you can see that there's no real shine to it. That is because the temperature was way under what it should have been. The um, Nozzle X just insulates it a little bit, so it's not really able to get to the same temperature or at least transmit the same amount of temperature into the filament. And I found this really fascinating. It should be shiny, um, same filament, but it's just not nearly as shiny. You can see it kind of in the corners here. You see a little bit of it in the corners where it's slowed down to turn around that corner you were able to get some of the heat in there. But yeah, generally speaking, this is a much lower temperature than it should have been. And I did try bumping up the temperature and it didn't really help. So I think this is kind of interesting how this performed. A little bit more on those. You see a little bit of um, zits and blobs and stuff like that on the inside of this one and they are just not anywhere on that one. So yeah, overall really happy with the performance of this. Now, all of this being said, you can absolutely just swap out your nozzle. That is not an issue, although you will have to reset your Z height. And for me, this is just too much of an ask, I guess. Um, I don't want to reset my um, Z height every single time, recalibrate that first layer. So I like just having one nozzle that I can keep in the printer all the time. $94 is a very, very, very expensive nozzle. So. Nozzle X is going to be good for most people, for most applications. Um, I still definitely recommend this. This is about $30, $35, link below on Amazon. This is going to be your go-to nozzle. And this, compared to just the standard hardened nozzle, I don't really like the hardened nozzle. If you're only doing abrasive filament, yeah, the hardened nozzle is totally fine. But if you want to print flawless PLA, flawless PETG, and TPU, this, you're gonna run into some issues with that. So I probably wouldn't do that one. But definitely the Nozzle X is a great budget option and a fantastic nozzle all around. And you can get this in the normal or like the volcano size nozzle, uh, links below. But the Diamondback, if you want just kind of one ultimate nozzle that does everything and gives you really, really, really decent print quality, I would just get the diamond back nozzle. So anyway, um, this video is not sponsored in any way. I didn't reach out to them or even talk to them about doing this. I just bought on my own with my own money. So keep that in mind. As always, thanks for watching. Um, got some more videos coming up, so stay tuned. I'm doing some more work on crippling depression, some other combat robot stuff. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.